Good morning, Here we Diana. Are. Good morning, Dan. It's I lovely to see you. I haven't seen you in two days, really. This is our second commencement this year, and a very exciting one. Very exciting. I'm Dan Schrag. <laughs> I'm I, Diana Eck. I'm in Earth and Planetary Sciences, and Diana is in the Department of Religion. Religion and South Asian Studies, so I do a... I, I span the world, really. Yeah, I mean, and I also, does, uh, and I also course, teach in the School of Engineering and Applied Sciences mm -hmm. and in the Harvard Kennedy School. This is such an incredible... Um, breadth that we see oh, across the university and today is really an opportunity to to celebrate that this is perhaps our most unusual commencement celebration uh, that we've ever had yeah this is of course not formally a commencement the degrees will not be granted today they the degrees be, have already been granted yes, they, they will be celebrated celebrated and I think the word they're using is confirmed they're going to confirm these degrees. It's a wonderful and thing. It is. I mean, these students who are assembling here today, no longer students, but people out in the world with whatever they're doing, um, experienced uh, a Zoom uh, commencement in students, 2020 and 2021. It's really <laughs> fair to say that the students in 20 who graduated in 2020 and 2021 had a uh, really challenging experience, unlike any other Absolutely. students at Harvard. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, I have a former student who took my class in the fall of 2020, Anik Steda. She's a Kennedy mm -hmm. School student, a mid-career yeah. master's student, mm -hmm. which is only a one-year program. She so, came for this commencement. I saw her the other day, and it was really her first, her first visit time. to Cambridge. Oh. She actually was yeah. here in 2009, yeah. mm -hmm. but before yeah. she was a student mm -hmm. here. You know, she was not able to come during that entire academic year while mm -hmm. she was in the mid-career program at the Kennedy School. And there are many students just yeah. like her who, who, because of COVID, have had to improvise, scramble. Yeah. And of course, we also should honor um, the people who really suffered during COVID. Oh. You know, many yes. mm -hmm. uh, students lost loved ones. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a colleague, Mariana mm -hmm. Lenz, who uh, lost a parent. Mm -hmm. um, many people we know at the university um, suffered in very profound ways through this mm -hmm. this COVID disaster with a million Americans lost. Yes. But today is a day for celebration. It is. And you know, when you think of the line of Fair Harvard, calm rising through change and through storm, this really is it. You know, the fact that we can have this celebratory event of with all of its pomp and processions and prayers and speeches uh, and that so many people have come I mean, absolutely there is many people here today perhaps oh, more really than we're here on thursday for the commencement of the class of 2022 now of there, course of course yeah. the there were 8,870 degrees granted on Thursday. Amazing. And it was extraordinary. Mm -hmm. It was also a slightly different ceremony because the alumni weren't here. And of course, yeah. they're not here today mm -hmm. either. Um, but we also have two classes combined. And what's incredible today in this celebration of the classes of 2020 and 21 is just how many people are actually coming okay. back. Yeah. Extraordinary number. We have mm -hmm. over 2,750 undergraduates coming back yeah. from two classes. I know, Rakesh Kurana said it was about 90% of those classes. I never imagined when I thought, well, yes, they're going to have an in-person commencement for everybody. I, I have to say, I, I was a little dubious at the outset. I thought, who's going to pay for it? How is everybody going to get back? But they've managed to do, uh, I think, to do well. It's a wonderful mm -hmm. thing. There yeah. will be, of course, mm -hmm. some changes in the yeah. ceremony. Mm -hmm. Again, we will, we will not have the alumni here. Yeah. Um, we will also have a speaker. There won't be any honorary degrees given, but there will be honorands on the stage because they have invited the honorary degrees from 2021 to return and yes. celebrate their mm -hmm. honorary degree here, mm -hmm. although they've already been yeah. bestowed on them. And then finally, um, you know, for me, before I did this broadcast with you, Diana, yeah. you probably don't remember this because you've been doing this for so long. Uh, was there a before? I don't remember <laughs> really, Dan. Well, one but... of the most <laughs> cherished parts of Harvard commencement mm -hmm. for faculty yeah. is that when you process into the Tercentenary Theater, I can't believe I got that right, Tercentenary Theater. It's tercentenary. Tercentenary Theater. Oh, there I didn't you get go. it right. Yeah, get the okay. 10 in there. There you go. So 
so um, when they process into this theater, the uh, the faculty walk through the undergraduates, yeah. and it is the most delightful process of seeing the students who were in your classes. Oh yes, mm -hmm. excited in their mm -hmm. robes and being mm -hmm. able to congratulate them and for them and to wave at you. Out it's a wonderful yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, because there are nearly three thousand of them today, yes, I know. they can't possibly they can't have them live. So they are going to have the undergraduates yeah. file in early mm -hmm. and take their seats. Mm -hmm. And that will abbreviate the procession a little bit, but that's okay. It means we'll mm -hmm. have a little less talking, yeah, and we'll have a little more ceremony, and that's a good that's thing. That's fine. But let, let's say a word about what is this tercentenary theater? You know, it is this whole stretch between Widener Library and the Memorial Church, and it has sort of set the bounds of a ritual space at Harvard that was developed. Uh, and named for the 300th anniversary of the university that was in uh, 1936. There's so much. Mm -hmm. There's so much history here. One important thing that is appropriate for today, perhaps, is that it is John F. Kennedy's birthday. He would be 105 years old today if he oh, were still alive. Wonderful. And mm -hmm. John F. Kennedy Jr. was a champion of education. Of course, he has a Harvard degree. Yeah. Um, uh, he insulted my alma mater, Yale, mm -hmm. once by when he got an honorary degree from Yale. Mm -hmm. He said, "It may be said now that I have the best of both worlds: a Harvard education and a Yale degree." Yeah, that I don't necessarily I don't, appreciate don't that. Don't really quote. agree with that. But then they have others like um, Caroline Kennedy was a graduate, is a graduate, and her daughter uh, Rose Absolutely. Kennedy Schlossberg actually was in Lowell House a little bit. So um, oh, you know course, when the they House had part. a commencement party for her. I got to dance with Caroline Kennedy. It was fun. Oh, and you great. will never guess where they had their party. In the Hong Kong. Oh, at that's the lovely. third floor of the that's Hong traditional. Kong. It was so, a lot of fun. So mm -hmm. um, there's a quote from John F. Kennedy about oh, education dude. that I thought might be mm -hmm. appropriate for today. He said, our progress as a nation can be no swifter than our progress in education. Yeah. Our requirements for world leadership, our hopes for economic growth, and the demands of citizenship itself in an era such as this all require the maximum development of every young American's capacity. The human mind is our fundamental resource. Absolutely. And, and to remember that when we're talking about, well, limiting the number of books that the human mind can read, for example. Yeah. So, uh -huh. so another yeah. celebration today, mm -hmm. of course, is mm -hmm. that uh, among the 2021 and 2020 classes in the college, uh, Malia Obama oh, uh, graduated. Yes. I, I believe President Obama and, and Mrs. Obama are not going to be attending today. It would create even more chaos, of course, with the Secret but Service and everything else. Hi. But we Welcome. congratulate them. I worked for President Obama for eight years Did as you? part of his oh, Council of Science and Technology mm -hmm. Advisors. I admire him so much, but, but here he's a parent today. Yes. And we should, in, in his spirit, celebrate all of the parents mm -hmm. who are out there, both here in Harvard Yard and at home. Mm -hmm. Parents, grandparents, family members, loved ones. Because as we all know, Diana, this, these students today who are graduating, they, celebrating their graduation. Yes. Mm -hmm. they, they, um, they didn't get here on their own. No, they didn't get so here much on support. their own. And in the middle of it, some of them had to go back to their high school bedrooms also. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. for all of that support, we honor all of those yes. families who, who mm -hmm. helped the, the celebrants today get across the finish line. We it's should a say a thing. word here about we're looking at Massachusetts Hall, which is the um, office of the president of the university of President uh, that's Larry right. Bacow. And that's where the, uh, uh, the corporation members, the president, the provost, and some of the honorary degrees and special guests mm -hmm. will gather before they, uh, before they process out. So they will be coming out We're trying to see soon. who's coming out. There would be, um, we well, should also say that Massachusetts Hall in its upper floors is a residence for a particularly select group of freshmen. That's right. Who live there? Uh, yes. They have to be the quiet ones, I suppose. Or I something guess they have to be quiet at least mm -hmm. sometimes. Yeah. Um, you know, there's so many 
wonderful people graduating today. I've got to call out my own nephew who really? graduated last year, Ari uh -huh. Benkler, yeah. son of Yochai Benkler, who's a professor yes. at Harvard mm -hmm. Law School, and Professor Deborah Schrag, who was at the Dana-Farber, uh -huh. just recently moved to Memorial Sloan Kettering in New York, so she's no longer at Harvard, but Ari Benkler, summa cum laude, class of 21, social Congratulations. studies. Congratulations. Wonderful. Yes. But so many other people. My colleague, John Shaw, who is mm -hmm. our new vice provost for research, his daughter, Amber Shaw, is graduating or graduated yeah. uh, concentration in, in HEB from Kirkland House, human evolutionary biology. Mm -hmm. There's so many wonderful people out there to celebrate. We, um, we George may have Daly, a few the, of them coming today, too. Absolutely. Just to, George Daly, the dean of the Harvard Medical yeah. School, and his wife Amy Edmondson, who's a professor oh. at Harvard Business uh -huh. School. Yes. Lovely people. Their their son Jack Daly uh, also graduated last year and or two years ago, and and uh, is uh, we're celebrating him today as well. Wonderful. There's so many people out mm -hmm. there. I can't mention them all, but nope. mm -hmm. it's um it's just wonderful to see so so much excitement and so much enthusiasm to come back and really celebrate their accomplishments. We're sort of waiting. The right-hand uh, uh, part of the screen here is the s chairs that are reserved for the um, the graduates. The, the well, those are those chairs those are probably are reserved for the undergraduates. undergraduates so these are yeah. or the former undergraduates. Mm -hmm. and former undergraduates. Uh, yeah. They're um, they should a lot be of them filling them up now. Mm -hmm. There were some other recent announcements around Harvard. You know, one of the um, special ways that Harvard alumni serve the university is through the Board of Overseers. It's a yes. little bit of an archaic name. I predict yep. that name will, yep, will get my, changed mm -hmm. one of these days. But for now, the Board of Overseers is a group of alumni who come and actually help advise <coughs> the university on a variety of they its do. practices. Mm -hmm. And there were seven new members, and, and I just want to call a few of them out because they're such special people. Well, Todd and these Park, are elected, we should say, elected they are by elected. the the student body, you could say, or the, the graduate alumni body. body, the alumni body of Harvard. So mm -hmm. t among these are Todd Park, who was in the Obama administration, uh, chief technology officer for yeah. the U.S. government. Mm -hmm. Fabulous guy, absolutely <coughs> brilliant. He's now co-founder and executive chair of Devoted Health, trying to innovate mm -hmm. in healthcare. And uh, I'm so glad that he'll be part of our community. Lauren Ansel Myers is a biologist, and statistician, data scientist at UT Austin. Um, and Lauren is a spectacular scientist, a wonderful person, and I'm so glad she'll be on the Board mm -hmm. of Overseers. And then fin finally, Wilhelmina, although she's known as Mimi, Mimi Wright, mm -hmm. she and I served on the Yale University Council, which is kind mm -hmm. of like the Yale's version of the Board of Overseers, although it's not yeah. elected, it's appointed. Mm -hmm. But Mimi is a judge in Minnesota, in Minneapolis. She's a federal judge. Um, and a spectacular, wise, calm, thoughtful person. And I'm really looking forward to having her be part of our community as well. Congratulations yes. to all of them. So, yes, and it, it's a job being an overseer. Absolutely. It's a, you know, you have to keep up to date on what's happening in the university. That's very important for those who are charged with, um, with oversight of our programs. The other thing that is likely to be different today is usually, if you say who's speaking, there are three student speakers, a graduate and an undergraduate English oration. Those will not take place today. Um, they did, in a sense, take place during the time of the, um, uh, of the absent commencements, the virtual commencements, but there will be a Latin uh, address, the text of which, for those of you who read Latin, is in the program for today, but it also is translated. Um, but the main speaker today is going to be Merrick Garland. That's the, right, and it's mm -hmm. unusual because Merrick Garland is not getting an honorary degree. Mm -hmm. This is just, uh, he's just the speaker, mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, um, again, usually we have the speaker in the afternoon, when but we will alumni. cram it in this morning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the, the ceremony is also <laughs> starting early. We started at 7 a.m. Yes. And, uh, and the students started at 6 or the. That's right. You know, those so who this were is a back very early day. And, that's mm -hmm. partly because we're packing this ceremony in, yeah. but it's also, 
also partly because uh, there's something called Boston Calling, yes, which is a rock absolutely. concert, a mm -hmm. series of bands performing mm -hmm. outdoors, um, uh, actually over near the Harvard Stadium. Yes, to, to much uh, controversy, really, but it is, we are, our deadline this morning is set by Metallica. Uh, that will start playing. Actually, sometime. I think Metallica isn't actually playing until tonight, but there's okay. other bands that are starting mm -hmm. this afternoon. And of course, after our ceremony this morning, after Merrick Garland's speech mm -hmm. speaks, the undergraduates go back to their houses, mm -hmm. I guess their former undergraduates, mm -hmm. and they will get their, uh, there will be some sort of ceremony in each of the houses mm -hmm. and, if, and at the different schools. And if you were at the River Houses or at the Kennedy School, you couldn't hear a thing. You wouldn't be able to hear a thing once the concert so starts. So they're really going to race the clock there. But they are receiving something, which is a little odd. What is an NFT, a non-fungible token? Do you know what that is? I do. So so that is a, 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 a new form of currency. Oh, uh, there's the, uh, we're watching the presidential chair being installed. That is kind of the throne that Larry Bacow, mm -hmm. the president of Harvard, sits in. It's an Normally antique, it's there early, I'm you surprised. You can tell because the cushion, as he's presenting it there, is triangular. It's a, it's so a, it's my understanding a, mm -hmm. is that it's incredibly uncomfortable. At least that's what Drew right. Faust told yes. me. Mm -hmm. um, it is called a Jacobean chair. Uh, I guess that's from its era, probably. And here we have a guest. Isn't this wonderful? So Good morning. Whoop. Mm -hmm. oh. Good. Whoop. Nope. Not yet. Um, so, so they're going to finish installing the chair, and I suspect we're going to see. Oh, the procession of the undergraduates is coming in, and uh, they rush this chair over from the Fog Museum, uh, the which is where it is in. kept securely for most of the time. So I think. These are um, uh, graduates of 20 and 21 who are beginning to file in. That's right. Mm -hmm. It's going to be throngs of them. How's that? Good. Yeah, hi. Hi. Great. So. We're looking at the president's chair. So, oh, Diana, yeah. we're joined this morning by one of our mm -hmm. former uh, seniors who graduated in 2020. Mm -hmm. This is mm -hmm. Katrina Hagedorn. And Katrina's Katrina, from Missouri. Nice to meet you. Nice from to meet Missouri. You. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the rural parts. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. I met Katrina because she took my class, mm -hmm. I think, as a sophomore. Is that right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> and, uh, and then would bump into her periodically. She was a, a biology concentrator. And um, uh, although now she's changed directions dramatically. She was a pre-med, but is now actually doing climate change education out in California. Really exciting. Yeah, yeah. Say a word about mm -hmm. that. Yeah, so I don't know. I guess it is exciting. I think that the climate crisis is one of the largest problems of you know, this world, of, of our generation. And so uh, whenever I took Professor Strag's class, I... Uh, like realized that, you know, my eyes were kind of opened and I thought like, wow, I, I need to be working to help address this problem because it's just, it's so much bigger than any one of us could imagine. Yeah. So you are wearing a particular ribbon that is a yes. first gen. Uh, uh, it says next gen, but yeah. Next gen. <laughs> next gen. Tell yeah. us about that. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I am first generation college, mm -hmm. um, which means I'm like first in my line of family generations to graduate from college with a bachelor's degree. Um, but I do actually have to say that I'm, I'm very proud of my mom because last year she also graduated. Oh, that's, with that's that wonderful. Degree. So you were the first, but she followed close after you. Yeah. Yes, exactly. That's wonderful. Is she yeah. here today? She is. She's she's watching from somewhere in the yard. Uh -huh. Yeah. Do you I want to call out to your parents? Yeah. Jumbotron um, somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Uh, I, hey. Thanks, Mom, for everything that you've done. Dad, for everything. My brothers, like, my entire family has supported me. And I'm sure that other families have supported all of you know, the amazing students that go here. And so just honestly, a shout out to, to my family and to all families who helped 
you know, all of these students go through Harvard because it's amazing, but it's also very difficult. And my hat's falling off. It's okay. We can just That's leave okay. it. Congratulations <laughs> to mom as well. Yes. That's wonderful. Good. Um, and um, so you're doing this research in California? Yeah, so I'm, I'm doing climate education and workforce development. Good. Uh, yeah, my, my company is really interesting because it's like it focuses a lot on building up leaders that will drive sustainability solutions. Absolutely. Yeah. We need those leaders in every sector of our society. That's so great. Katrina, your senior year ended pretty abruptly. I remember seeing you in March of 2020 when we were all kind of in shock over what was happening. That was a very hard way to end your college experience. Yeah. Does this coming back help a little bit in terms of just feeling closure a little bit? Yeah, definitely. I I do have to say I was, you know, I had mixed feelings about coming back. You know, I was like, you know, it's going to be bittersweet. And, you know, I feel weird about coming back. But now that I'm here and we're we're all together yeah. and, you know, we've gotten to connect, it's, it's definitely the closure and just like the satisfaction of everything culminating into this event. And are you made. back in the house you were in? And yes. what was that? Uh, Cabot House. In Cabot. <laughs> wonderful. Yes. <laughs> well, Good. Katrina, congratulations. I hope you Thank enjoy you so the much. day. It's a wonderful thing. Yes. And Thank we're you. really proud of you. Congratulations. And congratulations to all of your first gen, next gen people, too. It's wonderful. <laughs> Thank Good. you. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Yep. Nice. Yes. <laughs> so now we do see houses coming down that central aisle. There's Adams, and uh, they each have those standards that they hold high. That's good. Okay, good. We're looking at the statue of John Harvard right now. We're looking at the statue of John Harvard. You can see the undergraduates lining up, getting ready to walk in. Or the former undergraduates. It's hard to know how to refer to everyone to this morning. They are graduates at their own graduation. And or yeah. On an ordinary day, one would see uh, tourists from all over the world lining up uh, around the statue of John Harvard to photograph young people or their family, a sense that uh, this is symbolic of Harvard. But we know that John Harvard didn't look anything like this, or we don't think he did. There's the business school graduates. It's really remarkable how many people decided to come back to really put a put an exclamation point on their Harvard yes. experience. Mm -hmm. And when the bells ring, does that signal the launching of something? It's um it's a, it will be probably around 8 o'clock, if not a little bit before. I think we'll have all the undergraduates file in first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we haven't yet started the, the faculty procession. Here are the undergraduates coming in with their banners from their different houses. Of course, Harvard has its residential houses, um, kind of like the colleges at Oxford and Cambridge and Yale but uh, we call them houses. And of course, you know this well because you were I was first the master and then the faculty, faculty dean of a house dean for many of Lowell years. House for 20 years, really. And um, I always say it's the best job at Harvard, but it is a job. It is a I'll job. It's that. a lot of work, it really but you did it very well. I attended events community. there, and you and Dorothy, mm -hmm. and let's give a shout out to Dorothy, your Dorothy, partner, your love, yeah. who mm -hmm. is um, very beloved to all of us. Beloved to all of us. And, especially to me because we've been together ever since we were graduate students really um and i had a wonderful experience with her years ago yeah um when it, i was doing the 
what is it called? The Prayer of the Day in mm -hmm. uh, Memorial Church. At App Appleton Chapel, yes, the morning prayers. The morning prayer, and I, um, and she was there. Yeah. And she um, used to organize And took it. care of me. Oh, good. And I, uh, it was the anniversary of uh, Rachel Carson's Silent Spring. Oh. It was in 2012. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I talked about Rachel Carson, the 50th anniversary of that. Yeah. How great wonderful. work and mm -hmm. and Dorothy was such a love she was just oh. so t tender and kind to me well she has been a pastor for these many years that's true mm -hmm. yeah a special special and, person mm -hmm. so here they are everybody's ready for the festivities to begin there are aspects of a regular commencement that um, that have been included in the in this sort of reunion commencement of 20 and 21 and that includes the class day which usually is the whole day festival before commencement and this year um, Mayor Michelle Wu of Boston spoke at class day but they what they had was class day dinners last night uh, one for the class of 20 and one for the class of 21 with their own speakers. They also did something very extraordinary, which is they opened the dormitories, yeah. the freshman dormitories, the houses, mm -hmm. to the returning graduates. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that the undergraduates who are celebrating today were able to come back and actually live in the and dorms. Live in their live in their house. Um, which you can imagine, mm -hmm. the, the hotel oh. rooms. Oh, yeah. Are unavailable. Impossible. Yes. So that's one but, of the but things. But think about that, it. Yeah, I mean that's the it. undergraduates from class of 2022. Yeah. Just graduated on Thursday, and they had to move. And out. they had to move out on Pronto, Friday, absolutely. and then allow the new students to come <laughs> in on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine the logistics of doing I this? I can imagine. And we should give a shout out to our oh. champion, Stephen Magro, mm -hmm. who who is the coordinator of all these things in commencement. Amazing and choreographic doing job. even one <laughs> commencement a year is a Herculean task. Yeah. Doing two in a span of four days too uh, much, but is it really beautifully beyond done. the pale. And and a shout out too to all the building superintendents. The and building, building superintendents, managers, the work and teams all the that, workers that, that, that had to clean the dorms out, oh, and yeah. um, and everybody else who makes this celebration possible. You know, it this takes is not a lot of people. It it's does, a, it's really. an army. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely yeah. an army. It's amazing. Yeah, and all the commencement workers, which include volunteers uh, who have been at work all morning since we got here and even before. And of course, the Secret Service is out. I had uh, hoped that the Secret Service was here for. President Obama, yes. but he is not coming, I understand. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, Merrick Garland uh, certainly, is, yes. certainly deserves mm -hmm. Secret Service. On yes. Thursday, we had the Secret Service here as well for the Prime Minister of New of Zealand. New Zealand. Mm -hmm. And also because, uh, I didn't know until later, but John Roberts was here, the Chief Justice. Oh, he was. Uh -huh. he was in the crowd as a parent. Mm -hmm. His daughter was graduating. We, we didn't know. Mm -hmm. Hello. Oh, sorry. And so, so. By the way, I thought the Prime Minister of New Zealand's speech was, was absolutely amazing. stunning. Amazing. She yes. talked about kindness and empathy, but also the the need to actually talk with each other and, and disagree with each other. Yeah. The need engage to engage with each other, and and she had some pretty tough words on gun control and on response to tragedy because she's been through it. Absolutely. As a leader of a nation but, that, yeah. But the call, partly from the impact of social media, mm -hmm. but the call to engage with each other. Yeah, absolutely. You know, to me, that's what the university really is yeah. about, is mm -hmm. actually yeah. civil discussion, disagreement. Yeah. It's something that our whole society is forgetting how to do. Yeah. We like to surround ourselves yeah. with people who agree with us. And, and we need to constantly mm -hmm. challenge ourselves. And we're addicted to FaceTime, but what we need is face-to-face -face time, really. That's right. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, these technological things are great, but uh, we need to engage face-to-face -face as well. So we're joined by another 
uh, former Hello. undergraduate, uh, Meyer Johnson Potter. Welcome. Thank you. It's great to see you, Meyer. Meyer. This is Diana Eck. Diana. Nice, to, nice meet to meet you. Meyer was in the class of well, 2021, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, Meyer did his senior thesis with me. He was a concentrator in environmental science and public policy, and Good. wrote a senior thesis about climate policy. But we had a very strange experience because pretty much that entire process was online. Yes, it was remote. And in, even Were though you was, in 20 then or 21? So I actually started with the class of 2020 and before my junior year, I yeah. took a year to work back in, back home in San Francisco for my, uh -huh. state, for my state senator. And so great. I'm graduating with the classes of 2020 and 2021. So it's really great to be back. Perfect for you. You've friends. got it really worked out for yeah. me very well, yes. Tell me what happened at the graduation is this for the black this is graduation? Kentucky. Yes, this is the Black Students Association. Black Students so we're Association. Just celebrating our heritage, mm -hmm. and it's really great to be everywhere. Look really colorful. Everything. Wonderful. It is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. So, so Meyer, you now work at McKenzie, the consulting firm in New York, but you're actually doing a lot of work thinking about um, working with organizations, thinking uh, about um, a broad array of sort of sustainability issues. Is that's that right. right. That's right. And it's been really great, a great learning experience so far. Um, thinking, I, I, one of the reasons I joined McKinsey in the first place was to really think about how does the private sector think yeah. about climate change. This is something that I've really been passionate about and something that I studied with, with Dan. And it's been great to see how so many different stakeholders are coming, coming to the table um, in new ways that we haven't seen before. And so even though we have a lot of work that needs to be done that hasn't hasn't been done yet. It's been it's been really inspiring to see that people want want to want to make change mm -hmm. and, and really want to reduce carbon emissions and want to know how they can bring something to the table that hasn't already. Been. I think it's really hopeful and encouraging that McKenzie has people like you working for them who are interested in this important issue. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and it's been something mm -hmm. even since I've joined just mm -hmm. less than a year ago, you know. Boy. Even more and more people are getting more interested in this topic and I think we really need to bring all the best we can to bear uh, to meet all it's of the challenges so, that we're It's so wonderful to hear you say that. We do yeah. in every sector of society. Absolutely. Yeah. So what's it like to be back? Uh, is it is it a is it a nice way to kind of end your Harvard experience? You know, it is. It is. It's really great to be back with all my friends, all my families is out here from San Francisco, which is They're great. They're here? They're actually here, yeah. Wonderful. Shout out to your family. Yeah, you know, my mom and my dad that. and my younger brother. Uh, mm -hmm. Hello. <laughs> it's great. It's great to be with everyone. Um, but yeah, especially for me, as I said, you know, to, to be with both the class of 2020 and 2021 feels like a great way to sort of cap off what, like, such a wonderful experience. And, and I think... Every time I come back to Harvard, I'm so inspired. So mm -hmm. to be back here is a breath of fresh air, and it really gives me a lot of wonderful. Energy. And what house were you in here? I was in Winthrop House. Yeah. Good. And are so you staying in Winthrop now, or do yes. they just really? Yeah. So they actually put you back in the houses you were That's in. That's right. Which was really great. It was a throwback. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. it's been. I was even in the same room as my blockmate. So that, oh, was, that wonderful. was fantastic. Diana was so faculty great. dean at Lowell House for yeah. many years. That's right. So. Yeah, That's we right. were neighbors for a long I time. Know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, Fabulous. Meyer, congratulations. Thank you and so it's much. It's great to see you again, and I, we have lots more to talk about, so, so we'll keep the yeah. conversation going. Thank you so much. Congratulations for to your family and to yes. you, and hope it's a great day. Thank you so yes. much. Enjoy. Good. Great to meet Wonderful you. Wonderful to meet you, Meyer. So the Here ceremony continues. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The undergraduates are now filing in. You see those seats are getting filled. Thank heavens. Mm -hmm. Dan, you're really training a whole army of people to go out and work on climate change, and I am so glad you're doing that. Well, mm -hmm. it, it takes an army, and you know, yeah. I think what, um, what students don't often realize at the beginning is you don't have to be a scientist or a no. policy wonk to, to mm -hmm. impact climate change. There are so many different ways that students can contribute. and. I've got to say, I just, I love the students in my class. I had 215 of them in the fall, and they all have so, so many great. different backgrounds and mm -hmm. so many different perspectives and are going to go out and change the world in so many different ways. And you turn them loose to do some particular project each? Well, in the yeah. class, yeah. they have to design a low-carbon mm -hmm. economy, and they, I make them do it for the following reason, Diana. If I just were to lecture to them and tell them 
how difficult it is to change our energy system and fix the climate problem, they might write it down. They might think of it as my opinion. Yeah. But if I actually they make them make design them it themselves, do it, then they discover they how discover hard it how is. hard it is. And yeah. that's when the real conversation begins. You mean that's this whole talk. class of 215 are trying to, do, each of them, design of them. a low carbon energy system. That's right, system. a low carbon energy system Wonderful. for the U.S. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. of course what matters is for the world, but yeah. the U.S. is a small slice of that. And they begin to understand the problem in a different way. And I found that it's an important perspective on pedagogy. Sometimes mm -hmm. making the students struggle. You know, for yeah. some students, they get very frustrated because it's an impossible task, yes. it turns out. Mm -hmm. Not impossible, mm -hmm. but let's just say um, doing it in the time frame that we, we, we have set the goal by 2050, doing it in that time frame is very challenging. Mm -hmm. And they get frustrated because they're not used to things that require, um, that, that, are, that are essentially so difficult. That are difficult and, and that you need to start working on now. Well, for, and that's mm -hmm. where the conversation mm -hmm. begins about, yeah. okay, mm -hmm. now that we see how difficult it is, yeah. what do we actually do what about it? What are we going to do? And mm -hmm. to me, that's what's so exciting. And, you know, it doesn't matter whether a student is an English concentrator, a Kennedy School student from the Divinity School, from they the Design School. They all are going to face this issue. They so all they have need something to, to contribute. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. very exciting. Well, it is true. That, I mean, what we call active learning uh, is part of what I do in my ethics and civics class on pluralism. How do we learn in a society that is as multi-religious and multicultural as ours? How do we actually engage the tough problems? We have case studies about these that we have written over a number of years. Everything from, you know, if you're CEO of the Minneapolis airport and none of the taxi drivers will pick up passengers with alcohol, whose problem is that? especially when the taxi drivers are mostly from Somalia and Muslim. So, you know, wrestling with dilemmas that people have not had to face in education, in medicine, in You know, and Diana, there, and we certainly world. have lots of dilemmas today. You know, oh boy. let's remember mm -hmm. that the classes of 2020 and 21, 2021 lived through very challenging times. Oh. There mm -hmm. were already the pandemic was traumatic for many students. Mm -hmm. And then soon after, in that spring of 2020, George Floyd was killed. That's right. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't new for many people, but it was, it was so a visceral. reminder mm -hmm. of the way that, that African-American citizens are treated differently by police, mm -hmm. have a completely different experience. Yeah. This is mm -hmm. something we've known about. Mm -hmm. but it brought it to the fore and mm -hmm. at this university and I think our students at home as well because they were all remote at that point yeah. um, there was there was deep struggle with race you know for me I was very fortunate during the aftermath of, of George Floyd's death I was teaching a course on inequality mm -hmm. with with Arthur Siegel from the Harvard Business School mm -hmm. Arthur and I had a freshman seminar with 12 undergraduates, and we were talking about race, we were talking about inequality, and then George Floyd was murdered, and in some ways, we were like a support group for each other, yeah. and that was such a special time. Mm -hmm. um, but then, of course, we've also recently had the war in Ukraine yeah. that's continuing, mm -hmm. and the brutal, brutal um, situation over there. Yeah. Um, reimagining nuclear war in a way that uh, in some ways has been always there but lost to our imagination a bit since I was in high school when it was yeah. that I was the major I issue yeah of my it year. was mm -hmm. and then um, <clears throat> and now more recently these horrible slayings in schools again and again and again gun violence in this country and a struggle to confront the, the tragedy of that um, we heard the Prime Minister mm -hmm. of New Zealand mention that in her yes. speech the other mm -hmm. day because, as you said, she's dealt with it in New Zealand. So this class of 2020, 2021 have really dealt with real-world mm -hmm. situations through their time. Well, the other thing is that there's a significant percentage of them who are themselves of Asian background. They're Asian-American students or they may be foreign students from 
China or Korea, but mostly Asian American. So the uptick in violence uh, against Asian Americans has been something very personal for them, for their families, for their psyche, really. Um, the darkness yeah. of the mm -hmm. various expressions of racism in this country, yeah. uh, whether it's against African Americans, mm -hmm. against Asians, against uh, people of, of Middle Eastern descent, it's, it's uh, tragic and we keep having to confront it over and over and over again. Well, and it's good that we do confront it over and over because the sort of racial diversity of America is something that is frightening to some Americans, but a, a, a stark and I think uh, important reality for the, for the sort of creativity of our society. So we're probably about to see the faculty procession uh, begin. Yes. Coming into the theater. It's a little different because it will not wind through the old yard, but will come straight down the center aisle from the steps of Widener Library to this platform uh, under this great, beautiful tent that is erected over the steps of the Memorial Church. If you were to look outside, you'd see now the seats are mostly filled. The undergraduates have mostly filed in, mm -hmm. and we're almost ready for the faculty to come in with the, led by the president's party, the, yeah. the mm -hmm. president, the corporation, and uh, that's when we know mm -hmm. that the ceremony will be close. You know, all the diversity we were talking about, all of the extraordinary um, community at Harvard where we can talk about race, we can talk about um, inequality, we can talk mm -hmm. about these issues that divide us. Um, What's so special at Harvard is also under threat. You know mm -hmm. that there's a lawsuit that's trying to change the way Harvard admits its class. Um, and uh, that will ultimately make it potentially less diverse. And that is a, a big threat to, to this whole community. Uh, it's very difficult to imagine quite how that would happen. Is this, I mean, having been involved as a faculty member occasionally in the admissions process, you realize that it's very complex. It's not just, um, you know, how things are ticked off on an application. It also is the essays that students write, that you can't sort of cross out all of the references to their Vietnamese parents or to the experience they had as um, first-generation uh, immigrants from Latin America. Mm -hmm. There's Laura Fisher standing on the stage. Laura Fisher mm -hmm. was the associate dean uh, of FAS for many, many years. and, and She was, still is, I think, for human, uh, for faculty affairs. For faculty affairs. But, uh, she was the person mm -hmm. that took care of us. She yeah. is a spectacular individual. Yeah, wonderful. And her role at commencement is to make sure the stage is organized. And, and she's sure um, also an expert is. in Russian and Slavic. That's wonderful. Uh, we're joined by another student. Um, this is Ross Simmons, who is with us here, a graduate of the class of 2021. Good morning. Congratulations. Thank Dan Schrag. Ross, good to see good you to see again. Good to see you again, Matt. Good. So uh, tell us a little bit about you and your Roots. We had someone from Missouri here earlier, and I know you are. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, Missourians, uh, one of the best states for, for Harvardians. So lots yeah. of good Harvardians from Missouri. Uh, but I'm the class of 2021, a Lowell House, of course. Uh, graduated with a degree in mathematics, coming back for commencement. And it's been a wonderful time uh, being back here now, after being gone for a year. You're back in Lowell House? Yes, I'm staying in Lowell House for these couple of days for commencement, thankfully. Wonderful. Uh, and it's been a lovely to be returning home, eating in the dining hall, seeing all of my fellow Llewellyans oh. back. It's a great time. Now, you suffered through a very strange senior year. Yes. You were remote in the fall. Yes, and, and then, in the spring. And well, you were, I was physically here, but all the classes were still remote. The classes were still yeah. remote. So your senior year 
you actually did make it back for your final semester, but it was socially together, but even then it was divided a little bit because of the pandemic. Certainly. So uh, I remember in March of 2020 when they were all being sent home for the pandemic. Yeah. Uh, we thought that the class of 2020 were the ones that were having it worse, that they were missing their senior year, mm -hmm. their senior spring, that the rest of us would be back in the fall as normal. Yeah. You know, oh, I'm so sorry for these seniors. It turns out it went lasted a little bit longer than that we were expecting longer. with the higher restrictions. Um, so. I went home to Higginsville, Missouri in March and then stayed through the summer. And then in the fall, I was able to come back to be on campus for, for various reasons uh, and did classes remotely there. And that was a particularly awful semester because of the tight restrictions of people on campus yeah. uh, having to eat mi microwaved food alone in your dormitory room and still take classes remotely. Um, and as the semester got colder, the outdoor events dried up, so it was rather socially isolating. But come spring, it was much improved with more of the senior class. Because people yeah. could gather outside. Yes, yeah. people could gather outside. As the spring went from cold to warm, the events got warmer and warmer, and there was a sense of, of euphoria, of ecstasy on campus in the spring when we were finally eligible for vaccines from the state of Massachusetts. People were getting vaccinated, we, uh, restrictions were lifted, we were able to meet indoors more, people were able to have friends in their dormitories for the first time in over a year. So that was... There was that moment in the spring of 2021 where yeah. it almost looked like it was coming to an end. It almost looked like it almost. was coming to that an end. Of course, things are going back up again. Yes. But, uh, Ross, t say a word though, you were president of Gilbert and Sullivan yes. at this time, and you had to produce an, a remote version of Gilbert and Sullivan. How did you do this? Yes, yeah, so this was the, I was the president of the Harvard Radcliffe Gilbert and Sullivan Players when I was uh, here at Harvard. And in the spring semester of 2020, we just had to cancel our show outright. We were preparing to have it go on as usual in the spring of 2020, and we just canceled it. What out. were you going to do? We were going to do, for the first time since 1999, a non-Gilbert and Sullivan musical, uh, Kiss Me Kate. Which, oh, which you, is a wonderful musical. It's a musical. Everyone loves Kiss Me Kate. It is, however, accursed, because uh, it was the last show the MIT Gilbert and Sullivan players did before they dissolved. And then oh, really? when we tried to do Kiss Me Kate, we brought on a global pandemic. So, so we're not going to try to do Kiss Me Kate again. We'll blame it on you. But, Thank you. Uh, but then in the fall, we did a uh, production of Rudigore, uh, but we did not do all of the text. It was just a collection of songs from Rudigore kind of linked together on Zoom. So we had someone read a plot summary of yeah. what was happening between the songs and then pre-recorded versions of different songs with uh, videos of us singing individually in our rooms. Come spring, we did a more comprehensive production of Cox and Box, which is uh, a one-act operetta by Sullivan and Brunin, not Gilbert. Uh, but that we did the whole thing. Uh, it was live streamed on YouTube with some difficult technical ta challenges that we were able to surmount where we were all in our own rooms with our own computers yeah. um, on Zoom simultaneously doing lines back and forth. The songs were still pre-recorded because it is almost impossible to sing simultaneously uh -huh. on Zoom as anyone in any musical theater or choir. Because of the synchronization. Just because of the amazing. synchronization. No matter yeah. how good the internet, the, the yeah. speed of light only goes so fast. Yeah. Right. So, uh, well, it's pretty fast, but still. <laughs> yeah, still. So, so tell us, are your parents here today? My parents are here today. My parents, Mark and Annette Simmons, are here sitting between... Uh, from Higginsville. From Higginsville, Missouri. Congratulations. Yes, congratulations, to them. Yes. all of you. Yes. yes. Listen, I, I'm, we're so proud of you. We hope this has been a great way to sort of cap your Harvard experience. It has. It's like coming home, really. It, was, That's it good. has been a wonderful experience. Congratulations. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Ross. It was my absolute Have a pleasure. great day, the I rest will. of the day with pleasure your family. To see you. Thank you very good. much. Now we're about to see the president's procession, I think. Not sure, but they should be coming down the center aisle as well. The Tercentenary Theater is now... So interesting to hear full. these students. I mean, as Ross was saying, even when they were here, they had to pick up a meal in a box and take it to their room, and maybe they could heat it in a microwave, but eat it alone in their room. I mean, how what miserable is that? It yeah, was. It was a very hard time. Especially because the dining halls and that experience of eating together is really at the heart of the community that is built here. Well, you know, those hardships mm -hmm. make this sort of celebration mm -hmm. now all the more oh, sweeter. Oh, it does. I think that's true. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's true for all of us, even in our private lives, the idea that we can have a, a small dinner party around our own dining table. Even having, um, in my case, uh, 
our family over for dinner, our kids. And this last week, um, our son from California with his wife and their one and a half year old whom I had never seen before. Although, you know, many of us wonderful. are still very cautious. I mean, the numbers are increasing yeah. rapidly. Mm -hmm. The good news is hospitalizations and deaths are still relatively yes. low, but not zero. Yeah. And there's still a lot of concern. And so um, we do all have to be careful here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, these celebrations are outdoors. We've yeah. noticed, mm -hmm. by the way, many of the great festivities, for example, the School of uh, um, Continuing Education, Extension School, as we call it, um, they have set up huge array of chairs in front of the Museum of Natural History, my building, Yes. where they're doing all of their giving out of degrees outdoors because uh, it's really not a good idea to gather everybody to inside To do it anymore. inside, and yes. And at Lowell House today, I mean, I hear from the House Administrator how complex it will be to have two different classes lining up to be recognized one by one. And it really is that recognition. Um, whether they get this NFT, I don't know. Everyone's getting one of those. It looks but, like the aisle's kind of blocked off. So mm -hmm. we will now see... I suspect they will try to clear the aisle and in will come the president's party. The president's procession is led by the sheriff of Middlesex County, who will also call the meeting to order. Um, this is one of the high points of his public role, I think. Um, in any case, uh, then it includes the, the members of the corporation and the board of overseers and the ministers of this area um, as sort of part of that procession. The people who have uh, honorary degrees or were recipients of honorary degrees. And today also the past commencement speakers that were virtual in the last couple of years. Um, There's our, we see doctoral candidates there or doc, I guess doctoral recipients now. Um, of course, we talked about this the other day. The uh, one of the great things about commencement at Harvard is the pageantry, all of the mm -hmm. robes with the different colors. Mm -hmm. We see, of course, a lot of crimson robes. They actually look scarlet to me, but they mm -hmm. are supposedly They're supposed crimson. To be crimson. Mm -hmm. And uh, the uh, undergraduates wear simple black robes. The master's candidates have a hood mm -hmm. that is the the, the crimson drape on the back of their black robe and then the PhDs or other doctoral candidates the JD from the law school mm -hmm. the, uh, various other doctoral degrees like Doctor of Divinity or a variety of other doctoral degrees the university offers have uh, uh, crow's the feet. three stripes feet. on their arms mm -hmm. but they also have different col colors of crow's feet over on that's right the, yeah and amidst all of the Harvard robes you see some of us wear robes of a different color. And yours are not Yale, but Berkeley. Is that's that correct. right? Mm -hmm. I have blue and gold Blue robes. and gold, they're very beautiful. And that's beautiful. because the University mm -hmm. of California at Berkeley, originally mm -hmm. it was just the University of California mm -hmm. uh, in the late 19th century was founded and uh, its colors are blue and gold. But you see a whole array of colors and when you watch the faculty process in, we will see mm -hmm. all of the different colors mm -hmm. of the uh, of the faculty from many different universities. The, and the, the black and orange from Princeton, from Princeton the, uh, and the, the various combinations of colors. And the ones that have fur on them also some from of the, various uh, places. Some of the <laughs> European universities have extraordinary robes, yeah. wonderful style. Well, my hood is actually from Montana State where I grew up in Bozeman got one of my honorary degrees from there. So it is also blue and gold for the uh, Bobcats of Montana State. Um, but I also got an honorary degree from, um, from the University of uh, Toronto. And I got some sort of fur from that and I never figured out how to wear it really. I, I, keep it, I keep it in a nice that. box. So uh, mm -hmm. 
It's interesting that we haven't seen the president's party start to walk in yet. I wonder if there's some delay of some sort. Well, I suspect I'm that they sure should be they're... arriving soon. Mm -hmm. Yes, look at these photographs being taken. They're beautiful. Ah, uh, those are precious moments. They really are. It looks as if they're beginning to clear that central aisle. If they're clearing the central aisle, perhaps that means that the faculty procession will soon arrive. One does feel the sort of audio um, sounds of commencement. The bands playing, and some of them fight songs, some of them simply the, the, the beat of pomp and circumstance. And we will hear the commencement choir directed by um, Ed Jones, the choir master organist of the Memorial Church and also the director of the Lowell House Opera. Um, so there's music all the way through the program. And then the primary speaker again, uh, Attorney General Merrick Garland. Merrick Garland, it'll be interesting to hear what he has to say given all of the pressing issues. Uh, the, the investigation over January 6th. Of course, yep. mm -hmm. most of these things that are ongoing, he's probably not allowed to say anything about, so it'll be interesting. It's also important to remember, although he is President Biden's Attorney General, Garland was always known for being fairly middle of the road. One of the reasons he was appointed, uh, nominated by President Obama for the Supreme Court was that um, he had a chance of getting through yeah. a Republican mm -hmm. Senate. Of course, that was not to be. Mitch McConnell mm -hmm. prevented yes. even a, mm -hmm. a discussion of him, of his candidacy. And, and uh, he um, graduated summa cum laude from Harvard. So, so we're going to end our commentary now. We're going to transition to the ceremony. Unfortunately, I think we're going to miss the... Uh, the actual procession of the faculty, and uh, they will be filing in shortly.
Mr. Sheriff, pray give us order. As the High Sheriff of Middlesex County, I declare that the meeting will be in Today is a day of joy and celebration for our graduates and their families. But we gather here today mindful that this is also a time, sadly, of tragedy, a time of pain beyond words for families in parts of our country and indeed around the world. Before we begin, may we all join in a moment of silence as our thoughts turn to those for whom these are days of heartbreak and loss and to lives that have lend, uh, ended far too soon. A moment of silence, please. Thank you. Please rise for the national anthem to be sung by Nivi Ravi, Harvard College Class of 2021, and remain standing for the chaplain of the day, the Reverend Alice Kabotahe, who will open the exercises with prayer.
I will ring the bell three times and invite all of us to take a few moments of silence. To those who are willing, let us pray. Source of all, who is in all, who is beyond form, gender, race, ethnicity, status, and knowing, who is vast, encompassing, and includes all, who shows up to us in many ways, who we experience in various degrees, who we call on based on our beliefs, and who is with us, in us, always, whether we know it or not, whether we feel it or not, whether we believe it or not. We say thank you, thank you, thank you for this momentous day in the lives of the graduating class of 2020 and 2021. Our hearts are filled with gratitude for the privilege and honor to stand here today on this sacred land. Harvard University is located on this traditional and ancestral land of the Massachusetts, the original inhabitants of what we now know as Boston and Cambridge. We pay respect to the people of the Massachusetts tribe past and present, and honor the land itself, which remains sacred to the Massachusetts people. We gather today to rejoice in the achievements of our graduates who have gone through more than two years of a horrific COVID-19 pandemic, wars, conflict, and violence, political strife, and socioeconomic challenges in our country and in the world. Graduates here who have witnessed and experienced racial tensions, bias, structural racism. Graduates here who have grappled with their own and other struggles, pain, disappointments, failures, losses, and grief, as well as their joy, ease, and successes amidst all. Through such time, we are deeply grateful for all those who stood by them, who wept with them, who held them, walked with them, laughed with them, ventured with them, played with them, enjoyed with them, listened to them, supported them financially, guided and taught them. Most of all, we are deeply grateful for all those who loved and embraced them gently and fiercely in all that they are. Through such times, some of our graduates have explored and discovered what is most essential in life, appreciating what truly matters. Some have realized wholeness and beauty in brokenness, seeing that it is through the cracks in our lives that light can seep through. Some have gone beyond themselves in service in resourcefulness, in creativity, bringing hope and possibilities to others. Some have experienced strength in vulnerability, extending their understanding and compassion to other beings and themselves. And some have come to celebrate their fullness and gift as human beings as they welcome all aspects of themselves, light and dark, kind and unkind, wise and ignorant, humble and arrogant, wealth and poverty, love and hatred, joy and agony. And in doing so, they have been well able to welcome those qualities in others as well. 
graduating class of 2020 and 2021, with its rich and life-changing insights and experiences, with the strength, adaptability, intelligence, and creativity forged within you and from those who are dear to you, and with the help of others, I invite you to expand your hearts and minds and bless yourselves. Bless all who are here in this place. Bless this sacred and ancestral land of the Massachusetts people. Bless all beings in this world with abundance of hope, loving kindness, and understanding. Bless all of us with the courage to advocate for justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion in our communities. And bless all with the resources to do. Do only that benefits most, if not all. This is your legacy to the world. And as you make your mark in your chosen fields, may all that is good, true, and beautiful be above you to guard, be underneath you to support, be by your right hand to protect, behind you as a gift, in front of you to lead, round about you to shield you from storms, and within you as your strength and comforter. May you remember that just as you are an amazing blessing to others, you are an amazing blessing to yourself. May it be so. Amen. Kasho. I've been waiting a very long time to say the following words, so I want you to listen very, very carefully. Congratulations to the class of 2020 and 2021. What a beautiful sight this is, and what of a beautiful sound um, that was. Um, I'm not sure whether or not to call this day commencement or, candidly, your first reunion. <laughs> but I do know that this day is, is wonderful. It's truly spectacular and, as we all know, a very, very long time in coming. I want to extend a very special welcome to members of your class who could not be with us um, in person today and who are participating online. Now, some of you are international students um, still living abroad and could not make it back here uh, for this 
this in-person commencement, but I want you to know, watching online, that you are truly part of this, this ceremony. And actually, I'm going to ask your classmates now to turn and face the cameras and give you an enthusiastic wave and welcome, okay? So for all of you throughout this long or ordeal and actually well before it, your moms and dads and your spouses and families, um, friends, loved ones have been here for you. They've been cheering you on all along the way at every turn, making sure that you all know that you are loved and supported. Now, many literally sacrificed so that you could actually attend Harvard, so that you could be here today on this, your finally, finally your commencement. Um, and yes, some of those people also unexpectedly, at least for a while, once again became your college roommates. Um, some of them fed you, uh, cooked for you, if you were lucky, maybe even did a little bit of laundry for you. Um, I think you owe them a big debt of gratitude. So actually, I want to ask all the graduating students to stand and cheer on the real heroes of today who are sitting all behind us and thank them for helping you get here. Sending you all home in March of 2020, candidly, was one of the hardest things I have ever done. At the time, I never imagined that the pandemic would disrupt campus life for close to two years and would necessitate canceling um, not just one, but two commencements. But now, here you are, more than 9,000 strong, and I have to tell you that the view from here is really special, really spectacular. Uh, students, happy families, as far as the eye can see. I want to thank you for all being here in person, for making the effort to be here in person or to participate virtually, and for giving us the opportunity to provide you with the proper send-off that you all richly deserve. So welcome back to what is now your alma mater to an institution that will embrace you throughout your lifetime, an institution to which your many accomplishments and achievements will only add luster in the years to come. The reciprocity of membership in this community is really a curious thing. You actually get to go out into the world, um, a world that expects candidly great things from you because of your Harvard degree. While the great things that you wind up doing with your life, in your career, uh, will also accrue to that Harvard degree. And that value accrues to all those who came for you, before you, and all those who will come after you, and actually to all those who are seated here today. Think of it as veritas ad infinitum. <laughs> now, nothing has taught me this lesson more than the last two years. At the beginning of the pandemic, I, like all of the rest of you, worried a lot about a lot of things. Um, I worried about the health and safety of my family and the people that I love. Um, I worried um, about the communities which I belong and I care. I worried about what the future would hold for all of us. I worried about would we ever recapture what we once had? Would we ever experience the possibility of things actually returning to what they once were? But when I worried, every time I looked around, I was cheered on by what I saw, by the people of Harvard, 
people everywhere doing everything that they could, working fast, leaving nothing to chance. Each new day brought with it new challenges, candidly, things which we never expected. But every new day also brought a story, and sometimes multiple stories, of selfless effort, of creativity and ingenuity, of decency and kindness and humility. Your time as students, though not what you would have wished, though not what any of us would have wished for you, coincided with, I think, this institution at its best. We were reminded of something that has been true ever since Harvard was founded in 1636, and that is we rise to the challenge. Whatever the world throws at us, we meet that challenge, and each and every one of you did as well. I could not be prouder of any graduating class. Congratulations again to all of you. <laughs> Members of the class of 2020 and 2021, um, you need not be challenged any further, at least not by Harvard. Uh, today you go forth in the world, you know, PSETs, exams, papers, thesis, all in the rear view mirror. Um, but may you proceed from this space connected to one another, uh, steeled by your experience, more confident and resilient, and ready to meet whatever the world throws at you in the future. And you will find yourself challenged once again. Take what you have learned here during your time here and use your education to leave this imperfect world better than the one you inherited. I have great confidence that you will. I am enormously cheered and optimistic by, optimistic by what I see in each and every one of you. You are going to do great things, and I can't wait to, to hear about it, and to read about it, and to watch it myself. Good luck to each and every one of you. Congratulations and Godspeed. Salutatory will now be given. Eter Peratunum, Carolyn Engelmeyer, Bachelor of Arts, Harvard College Class of 2020. Prices Bacow, Decani Notissimi, Professor Estoctissimi, Familiae Honoratissimae, Hospites Clarissimi, et Tandem, Vos Condiscipuli Carissimi, Salvete Omnes! Mihi magno honori est, apud vos, in hoc foro quod theatrum ter centenarium apelamus, verba profere, etiam si, in lingua ehiu plurimis obscura. Felicitatis nostrae conscia, res gestas pronuntiavo, Cohortis Universitatis Harwardianae, Ani bis millesimi vicesimi. Et vicesimi primi. <laughs> Cohortis et nomine clarae, 
et factis fortis. Hodie, ex aria Harvardiana proficiscimor, alii ad terras remotas, alii ad seres propiores, alii ad regiones noas, omnes tamen post experientiam tam mirabilem ut non nulli eam transformativam esse affirment. Mihi autem alio de itinere dicendum est, itinere nostro per universitatem Harvardianam, quod mihi simile videtur, fabulae ulixis, multa actiu patientis, qui decem annos post troiam dereptam erauet, dum domum rediret. Nemo dubitare potest, quintantis wikibus repetidis afflicti, iter nostrum identidem flectere cogeremor. Nos, nos homines, contraversia de stipendiis laborantium, extricliniis anumbergensibus expulit. Nos seniores, pestis, totum per urbem terarum calamitosa, Ex deversoriis canta brigiaque propulsit. Sed trium fauimus, alacritate, constantia, tauro que rubro acti, questiones collectas scientiae computatoriae quinquagenta debelauimus, atque compositiones expositionum scribendarum superavimus. Cum hieme furioso bostoniense, hostibusque novi portus certavimus, sicut ulixes ad sedem loto fagorum apropen quavet, etiam nos locum invenimus ubiquicumque indereretur, nec dormiens, nec vigilans, temporis procedentis obloisceretur. Id est contignatio tertia bibliotecae Lamontes. <laughs> Mox domus noas progressi sumus, pars ad ripas fluminis caroli, pars illa beatior ad locum amoinum horti quadrati. <laughs> Sed terque quat terque beati, quibus intramuenia alta, domus coriorensis. Splendidissimae ac illustrissimae omnium, considere contiget. Paene ad finem itineris nostri per veneramus, desibus scriptis, correctis, Submissis, cum subito, nuntiatum est, morbi causa, nobis plus ultra vagandum esse. Pro noctibus in taberna felipeana tritis. Spatio inter socios consuescere conati sumus. Cubicula dormitoria in celas zumienses mutata sunt. Et vestimenta solita, brachis sudatoriis cederunt. Sed multas per gentes, et multa per aequara vecti, mem veneramus experientias nostras apod universitatem Harvardianam nos conjungere. Hodie, amici, Aut coram, aut procul, domum revenimus. Diebus festis veres ani senioris amisis, aliquid tamen quoque adepti sumus. Nexum inter nos dura turum. Sunt in porta ariae harvardianae, 
cohortis ani millesimi, octingentissimi, quinquagesimi septimi, inscripti quidam versus poetae horatii. Felices teret amplius, quos in rupta teret copula, nec malis iulsus querimoniis, suprema citius solvet amor die. Haec verba condiscipuli carissimi, haec verba vobis loquor, illa familiaritas nostra semper in rupta manebit. Ergo naue solvete, sed memoria tenete, amicos harvardianos, tamquam portum tutum in alto mare semper futuros esse. Awaite atque valite!
The deans of the several departments will now present to the president and members of the governing boards in the favoring presence of the friends here assembled, the graduates from the classes of 2020 and 2021, whose various academic distinctions are with due ceremony to be confirmed. The Dean of the Faculty of Arts and Sciences. In the name of the Faculty of Arts and Sciences, and by its authority, I have the honor to report on four groups of recent graduates today. First, the Dean of the Graduate School of Arts and Sciences will present recent graduates of earning the degrees of Doctor of Philosophy and Masters of Art. Next, the Dean of the Engineering and Applied Sciences will present recipients of the degrees of Master of Science and Master of Engineering. Third, the Dean of Continuing Education and University Extension will present recipients of the degrees of Associate of Arts, Bachelor of Liberal Arts, and Master of Liberal Arts in Extension Studies. Finally, near the close of these exercises, recent graduates of Harvard College who are recipients of the first degrees in arts or in science will stand proudly before you. The recent graduates of each of these groups have, by vote of the faculty, fulfilled requirements for the degrees for which they were severally recommended. I salute all of these individuals, trusting that they will forever wisely enjoy the freedoms that their education has given them, while bearing the responsibilities that their learning demands of them. Each of these groups will now be introduced by the deans responsible for the programs in which they were enrolled. Recipients of the degree of Doctor of Philosophy will rise. <laughs> the Dean of the Graduate School of Arts and Sciences. Mr. President, members of the governing boards, as Dean of the Graduate School of Arts and Sciences, I have the honor to present to you these scholars, all of whom have devoted themselves to the rigorous pursuit of advanced study have attained high distinction and have made original contributions to knowledge in their several fields of scholarship. By virtue of authority delegated to me and recognizing your high academic achievements, I confirm the conferral on you of the degree of Doctor of Philosophy and welcome you to the ancient and universal company of scholars and entrust to you the free inquiry of future generations. Congratulations. <laughs> Graduates from the Graduate School of Arts and Sciences who have received the degree of Master of Arts will rise. <laughs> the Dean of the Graduate School of Arts and Sciences. Mr. President, members of the governing boards, as Dean of the Graduate School of Arts and Sciences, I have the honor to present to you these recent graduates, all of whom have completed a commendable step of advanced study 
in their respective disciplines. By virtue of authority delegated to me, I confirm the conferral on you of the degree of Master of Arts and certify that you have surmounted with distinction an important stage of graduate study. Congratulations. Graduates from the School of Engineering and Applied Sciences who have received the degrees of Master of Science and Master of Engineering will rise. The Dean of the School of Engineering and Applied Sciences. Mr. President, members of the governing boards, as Dean of the School of Engineering and Applied Sciences, it is my great honor to present to you these recent graduates who have completed a commendable step of advanced study in engineering and applied sciences. They stand ready to address societal challenges through foundational science with translational impact. By virtue of authority delegated to me, I confirm the conferral on you of the degree of Master of Science or Master of Engineering and certify that you have surmounted with distinction an important stage of graduate study. Congratulations. Recipients of the degrees of Associate of Arts, Bachelor of Liberal Arts, and Master of Liberal Arts in Extension Studies will rise. The Dean of Continuing Education and University Extension. Mr. President and members of the governing boards, as Dean of the Division of Continuing Education and University Extension, it is my honor to present to you these lifelong learners whose ability, curiosity, and dedication have awarded them the degrees of Associates of Arts, Bachelor of Liberal Arts, and Masters of Liberal Arts in Extension Studies. By virtue of authority delegated to me, I confirm the conferral on you of the degree of Associate of Arts, Bachelor of Liberal Arts, or Master of Liberal Arts in Extension Studies, and admit you to the fellowship of educated individuals. Congratulations to you all.
the Dean of the Faculty of Medicine. Mr. President, members of the Governing Board, in the name of the Faculty of Medicine and by its authority, I have the honor to report today that two groups of recent graduates in the fields of medicine and dental medicine have fulfilled the requirements for the faculty for their degrees. They will be introduced by the deans responsible for the programs in which they were enrolled. And if I may, Mr. President, by virtue of the authority delegated to me as a parent, I have the honor to report today my warmest love and deepest pride in my son, Jack Daly, Harvard College, Class of 2021, Kirkland House. Congratulations, Jack. Recipients of the degrees of Doctor of Dental Medicine, Doctor of Medical Sciences, and Master of Medical Sciences will rise. The Dean of the School of Dental Medicine. Mr. President, members of the governing boards, as the Dean of the School of Dental Medicine, I have the honor to present to you these recent graduates, each of whom has devoted four years to the study of dental medicine, or at least three years to postdoctoral studies aimed at improving health and quality of life. By virtue of authority delegated to me, I confirm the conferral on you of the degree of Doctor of Dental Medicine, Doctor of Medical Science, or Master of Medical Sciences, and declare that you are qualified for practice and research in a de demanding branch of medicine. Congratulations. Recipients of the degrees of Doctor of Medicine, Master of Medical Sciences, Master of Bioethics, Master of Biomedical Informatics, Master of Healthcare Quality and Safety, and Master in Clinical Service Operations will rise. The Dean for Medical Education. Mr. President, members of the Governing Boards, as Dean for Medical Education, I have the honor to present to you these recent graduates who have dedicated themselves to the relief of human suffering and prepared themselves well for a life of learning and service in medicine. By virtue of authority delegated to me, I confirm the conferral on you of the degree of Doctor of Medicine or the other degrees in medicine for which your studies have qualified you, and declared that you are ready to pursue and advance an honorable and merciful calling. Congratulations. Recipients of the degrees of Master of Theological Studies, Master of Divinity, Master of Theology, and Doctor of Theology will rise. The Dean of the Faculty of Divinity. <laughs> Mr. President, members of the Governing Boards, as Dean of the Faculty of Divinity, I have the honour 
to present to you these recent graduates, each of whom has devoted two, three, or more years to religious and theological studies in preparation for careers as leaders in scholarship and vocations of service. By virtue of authority delegated to me, I confirm the conferral on you of the degree of Master of Theological Studies, Master of Divinity, Master of Theology, or Doctor of Theology, and declare that you are well prepared to foster the health and vitality of communities of faith, to further scholarship in religious studies, and to help in shaping the shared values of a broader society. Congratulations. Recipients of the degrees of Doctor of Law, Master of Laws, and Doctor of Juridical Science will rise. The Deputy Dean of the Faculty of Law. Mr. President, Members of the Governing Boards, it is my honor to present to you these recent graduates, each of whom has completed a degree in legal studies towards the end of advancing justice and promoting the rule of law. By virtue of authority delegated to me, I confirm the conferral on you of the degree of Doctor of Law Master of Laws, or Doctor of Juridical Science, and declare that you are ready to aid in the shaping and application of wise restraints that make us free. Congratulations. of the degree of Master in Business Administration will rise. The Dean of the Faculty of Business Administration. Mr. President, members of the governing boards, as Dean of the Faculty of Business Administration, I have the honor to present to you these recent graduates who have mastered the study of business and have prepared themselves to be leaders who will make a difference in the world. Before I recognize the graduates of this class, I want to recognize someone else who was with you when you were a student at Harvard Business School. And that is your, your Dean, Nithin Noria, who stepped down during the pandemic and who is with us today. Nithin, thank you for your service. By virtue of authority delegated to me, I confirm the conferral on you of the degree of Master in Business Administration and testify that you are ready to lead people and organizations in enterprises that will serve society. Congratulations. Recipients of the several degrees in architecture, landscape architecture, urban design, urban planning, design, and design engineering will rise.
the Dean of the Faculty of Design. Mr. President, members of the governing boards, as Dean of the Faculty of Design, I have the great honor to present to you these fabulous recent graduates who have transformed our world here and will continue to do so out there. Each of them has fulfilled a master's degree in architecture, landscape architecture, urban design, urban planning, or design studies, or the master's of degree in design engineering conferred in collaboration with the School of Engineering and Applied Sciences, or the degree of doctor in design. By virtue of authority delegated to me, I confirm the conferral of you of the degree uh, for which you have, your studies have qualified you and declare your competence to lead in shaping the spaces in which we live. Congratulations. Recipients of the several degrees in public health will rise. Members of the governing boards. As Dean for Academic Affairs for Public Health, I have the honor to present to you these recent graduates, each of whom has qualified for a master's degree or doctor's degree to provide leadership advance knowledge, and now more than ever to improve the public's health. By virtue of authority delegated to me, I confirm the conferral on you of the degrees in public health for which your studies have qualified you, and declare that you are well prepared to generate and utilize knowledge to improve health throughout the world. And God knows this world needs it. Recipients. Recipients of the degrees of Master of Education, Doctor of Education, and Doctor of Education Leadership have all risen. The Dean of the Faculty of Education. Mr. President, members of the governing boards, as Dean of the Faculty of Education, I have the honor to present to you these recent graduates who will change the world through education. By virtue of authority delegated to me, I confirm the conferral on you of the degree of Master of Education, Doctor of Education, or Doctor of Education Leadership, and declare that you are well prepared to guide and serve the learning needs of contemporary society. Congratulations. Recipients of the degrees of Master in Public Administration, 
Master in Public Administration in International Development, and Master in Public Policy will rise. The Dean of the Faculty of Government. Mr. President and members of the Governing Boards, as Dean of the Faculty of Government, I have the honor to present to you these recent graduates, each of whom has qualified to provide leadership in public service. By virtue of authority delegated to me, I confirm the conferral on you of the degree for which your studies have qualified you and testify that you are well prepared to serve as public leaders and improve public policy and administration throughout the world. Congratulations to you all.
recipients of the degree of Bachelor of Arts or of Science will rise. Their chosen representatives, together with recipients of those degrees, summa cum laude, will draw near. This is what happens when you have two classes of sumas. <laughs> the Dean of Harvard College. Mr. President, members of the governing boards, as Dean of Harvard College, I have the honor to present to you these recent graduates, each of whom has fulfilled the faculty's requirements for the first degree in arts or in science. Each of them stands ready to advance knowledge, to promote understanding, and to serve society. By virtue of authority delegated to me, I confirm the conferral on you of the first degree in arts or in science and admit you to the fellowship of educated individuals. Congratulations, class of 2020 and 2021.
By virtue of authority delegated to me by the two governing boards, I now confirm the conferral of honorary degrees. We, we are pleased to recognize five of the distinguished individuals who received honorary doctoral degrees during our virtual commencement celebration in May 2021 and who are here with us today. I will briefly introduce them, and the President will read their citations. He is among the most admired journalists of our time, known for his bedrock integrity and his relentless pursuit of the truth. He has played leading roles at five of America's premier newspapers. Early on at the Los Angeles Times and the New York Times. Later, as executive editor of the Miami Herald. Then, for more than a decade, as editor of a newspaper that rivals the crimson in the unstinting praise it always heaps on Harvard the Boston Globe. <laughs> Most recently, for eight plus years as executive editor of the Washington Post, which reaped a harvest of Pulitzer Prizes under his outstanding leadership. He was Harvard's virtual commencement speaker for the class of 2020. And we are honored to have him with us today in three dimensions. We welcome a paragon of the press, Marty Barron. A formidable fiduciary of America's fourth estate, as a herald of light and a bearer of truth, he has deftly kept us posted on the times around the globe. Martin Barron, Doctor of Laws. She is a path-breaking sociologist from the University of California, Berkeley, known for her deep insight into human emotions. She has explored how we navigate the boundaries between work and family, and how working mothers manage all that they do. She has studied how different workers, from flight attendants to wedding planners, induce themselves to feel and express the emotions they regard as right for their jobs. 
She has examined what happens when we pay other people to take on personal responsibilities of our own. And she has ventured from blue California to red Louisiana to better understand the feelings of alienation among many Americans on the political right. We welcome Arlie Hochschild. Crossing chasms in outlook with empathy, her springboard, probing the interplay of feelings and relations, she has reckoned the wages of emotional labor and sought to discern where the right sees wrongs. Arlie Russell Hochschild, Doctor of Laws. In college, as president of the National Union of South African Students, she raised her voice against apartheid. She immigrated to the United States, earned degrees at Harvard and Yale, and entered legal practice. She rose to become the president of the Boston Bar Association, then vice president and general counsel of Harvard. Then, associate justice and, before long, chief justice of the Supreme Judicial Court of Massachusetts, the Western Hemisphere's oldest appellate court in continuous existence. Among her myriad accomplishments, she wrote the first state Supreme Court decision recognizing a constitutional right to marriage equality. In every role, at every turn, she has led with strength with compassion, and with a fierce dedication to fairness, opportunity, and the rule of law. We welcome the Honorable Margaret Marshall. An ardent advocate against apartheid, an eminent exponent of equality under law, in serving venerable institutions, a venerated leader, in striving for justice, a chief marshal supreme. <laughs> Margaret Hillary Marshall, Doctor of Laws. He grew up in rural Brazil. He trained as an economist in Sao Paulo and in Paris. He traveled to Africa for the World Bank, and along the way, he took up a camera. I looked through a lens, he recalls, and started a new life. He is renowned for black and white photographs of extraordinary expressiveness and stark beauty, pictures that tell stories, and pictures that provoke discussion of urgent societal challenges. His bold images cast light on the homeless and the landless, on migrants and mine workers, on people stricken by famine and people besieged by war. They also display the grandeur of the natural world and the delicate balance 
between people and nature. We welcome Sebastian Salgado. With sublime images of poignant power, with profound devotion to human dignity, with concern for the precarity of a fragile planet, he frames spellbinding stories of life on Earth. Sebastio Salgado, Doctor of Arts. She has been a Hasidic rabbi and a Muslim minister, a teenage student of Haitian descent, and a 50-something MIT physicist, chief of the LA police, and former chair of the Black Panther Party, a Korean-American grocer, a Native American fisherman, and a pregnant Panamanian cashier. It's been said that she inhabits other people's souls. Through intensely revealing interviews, through ingeniously constructed monologue-based theater pieces, and through indelible performances of infinite variety, she has formed a fresh form of art. Actor and playwright, author and professor, recipient of the National Humanities Medal. She is among our most brilliant portrayers of the human condition, especially on issues of race and justice. We welcome Anna DeVere Smith. Stirring our conscience with artful acumen, a portraitist whose palette evokes many hues and shades. Immersing herself in the lives of others, she holds up a mirror to what fires human nature. Anna DeVere Smith, Doctor of Laws. We now recognize our virtual commencement speaker for the class of 2021, who received an honorary degree on this stage 20 years ago in 2002. She is one of the most accomplished and inspirational leaders in all of American higher education. Born and raised in Texas, the daughter of sharecroppers, she attended college at Dillard University. Then, much to the bewilderment of family and friends, she came to Harvard to earn her PhD in French. She went on to become president of Smith College, then president of Brown University, and now president of Prairie View A&M University in her native Texas. Throughout her singular career, she has been a clarion voice for building excellence in higher education on a strong foundation of diversity, opportunity, and truth. As keynote speaker at our recent conference on Harvard and the legacy of slavery, she said that her outlook on life is really very simple. Just do good and do justice. She is an exemplar of those words, 
It is good and just that we proudly welcome Ruth Simmons. Opening minds, opening doors, opening eyes to new opportunities. She has spurred higher education higher with inspiring providence. Ruth Simmons, Doctor of Laws. In the name of this, in the name of in the name speaking in the name of this society of scholars i confirm that these persons are entitled to the rights and privileges pertaining to their several degrees and that their names are to be forever borne on its roll of honorary members congratulations to the honorans class of 2021 recognized today In these extraordinary times, and in view of the extraordinary experiences of the classes of 2020 and 2021, we now pause to give thanks. thank the many members of our community who work tirelessly and devotedly to sustain essential activities across different parts of the Harvard campus throughout the most challenging times of the COVID-19 pandemic. Thanks to the work you persevered in doing from day to day under rapidly changing and intensely demanding circumstances, the university was able to carry forward its most critical on-campus operations and sustain the pursuit of its academic mission. We salute you and we thank you. We rise to thank the many members of our community whose hard work, nimbleness, creativity and technological savvy made it possible for Harvard's many and varied programs of education and research, as well as its vast array of administrative functions to operate remotely, at a distance, during a time when our campus was closed. You enabled our faculty, students, and staff to teach, learn, and work off campus in locations near and far, across the country and around the world, under conditions we had scarcely imagined before the pandemic. We salute you and we thank you. We rise to thank the many members of our community have worked with relentlessness, commitment, and compassion to tend to the health of the countless people affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. You have cared for thousands and upon thousands of people infected 
with the virus. And you have cared for innumerable others whose health and wellness, both physical and mental, have been affected by the pandemic in myriad ways. Seldom in history have members of the health professions risen to a challenge with such courage, tenacity, and impact. We salute you and we thank you. We rise to thank the many members of our community whose research, scholarship, and public-minded service have contributed to the battle against COVID-19 for the benefit of people everywhere. Your scientific discoveries and your engagement with policy, your leadership in educating the public and addressing practical challenges, your focus on bringing powerful intellectual resources to bear on one of the defining crises of modern times. All these have made an incalculable difference in the lives of individuals, families, and communities worldwide. We salute you and we thank you. We rise to thank the members of the Harvard faculty across all the academic disciplines and fields who found ways amid an unprecedented public health crisis to carry forward the enterprise of learning. We know it wasn't easy, and we know it required enormous extra effort and a willingness to experiment, to adjust, and to innovate at every step of the way. We salute you and we thank you. We rise to thank the members of the Harvard staff all across the university whose efforts support and propel Harvard's academic mission in ordinary times and whose remarkable spirit and dedication have been indispensable throughout these anything but ordinary times. So many of you are unsung heroes and if we had the vocal chops to sing your praises, we'd be singing them now. We salute you and we thank you. We rise to thank the members of our global alumni community, hundreds of thousands strong, who through good deeds in your home communities and through your support of Harvard's efforts, have made contributions large and small to the battle against COVID-19. In helping others, you have set an example for us all. You have done Harvard proud, and we are, are proud to have joined your company. We salute you, and we thank you. We rise to thank all of the family members of the classes of Harvard's 2020 and 2021. We would not be here without you today. Shout out to my mom. And we want to thank you as well for all of your amazing support over the past two years and more. We wouldn't be able to share in this shining moment with all of you. We are so thankful. We love you and thank you so much. It is my turn to thank all the members of the historic Harvard College classes of 2020 and 2021, the thousands of you here today and the thousands of you watching from around the world. Your Harvard experience was disrupted by a deadly and daunting pandemic. You had to navigate challenges unlike any faced by your predecessors in decades past. And you did so with resilience and resolve with creativity and compassion, with grit and with grace. We salute you, we thank you, and we congratulate you all. I now have the great privilege to introduce our principal speaker. Here in Cambridge, we like to think that Merrick Garland considers Harvard 
his home away from home. After growing up in Chicago, he graduated from Harvard College in 1974, summa cum laude, just like many of you. Three years later, he graduated from Harvard Law School, magna cum laude. A decade after that, he married a Harvard alumna at the Harvard Club of New York, and hello, Lynn, glad you're with us. From 2003 to 2010, he served on Harvard's Board of Overseers in his final year as president. Had you been graduating then, the deans would have ticked their caps also to President Garland. His devotion to Veritas showed no signs of dilution when not just one, but both of his daughters chose to attend a, a college, an obscure institution of higher learning in Southern Connecticut, perhaps best known for its proximity to exceptionally good pizza. <laughs> but for all of his roots in Cambridge, it's in Washington, D.C., where he has really made his mark. He clerked for Justice William Brennan on the United States Supreme Court. He worked at a prominent Washington law firm in the, in the U.S. Attorney's Office for the District of Columbia. He served as the principal Deputy Attorney General in the Department of Justice, where he oversaw a range of high-profile matters, including the case on the bombing of the federal courthouse in Oklahoma City. He served from 1997 until 2021 as a judge, including seven years as chief, chief judge on the United States Court of Appeals for the D.C. Circuit, widely regarded as the nation's second most important court. And as you might have heard, he nearly went on to serve as a member of the nation's highest court, but that's actually a story for another day. In 2021, he was confirmed by the United States Senate to serve as the 86th Attorney General of the United States. He has taken up that role with all of the personal characteristics that are hallmarks of his distinguished career. Integrity, humility, discipline, determination, judiciousness, equanimity, high standards, a prodigious work ethic, a talent for building consensus, an unwavering commitment to justice and equality, a deep, deep devotion to the rule of law, and an ever-present concern for how the law affects the lives of real people. If we had a garland for graduates who have served our nation with distinction, few Harvard heads would be more deserving. It is my great pleasure, my great honor, to welcome our principal speaker today, the Attorney General of the United States of America, the Honorable Merrick Garland. Chair. Uh, thank you, President Bacow, for this extraordinary honor and for your kind but overly generous introduction. And thank you to my wife, Lynn, Harvard class of 1982. For listening to President Bacow's introduction without laughing out loud at the over generous parts. It truly is an honor to be back here today to offer my own welcome back to the patient 
and indomitable classes of 2020 and 2021. And it is an honor to be here with your families and loved ones to celebrate with you. I know it must be a little strange to be back here, not as soon-to-be graduates anxious about the future, but as actual graduates anxious about the future. <laughs> it does relieve the pressure on me, though, knowing that today I'm speaking at your 10-year reunion instead of your graduation. Yes, 2020 through 2021 was a long decade for all of us. <laughs> And it's a great comfort to see you all in your robes. You look like little judges. <laughs> I feel right at home. I know that because of the pandemic, your experience was not entirely what you had expected. Life does not always turn out the way you expect. Trust me on that. But it is a great honor to recognize the extraordinary resilience you have shown. We are all very, very proud of you. I also want to acknowledge an additional impossible kind of resilience that your generation has been asked to weather. As we gather today to celebrate this milestone in your life, we are also holding on to an enormous amount of grief because of yet another mass shooting at another school in our country. An unspeakable act of violence has devastated families and an entire community in Uvalde, Texas. I know I speak for all of us here that our hearts are broken. Before that horrific attack, and before the horrific attack in Laguna Woods and the horrific attack in Buffalo, I had decided I wanted to make this speech about public service, about what each of us owes to each other, and about what we all owe as residents of a democracy. And I still want to talk about public service today because these tragedies only underscore how urgent the call to public service for your generation truly is. And because of a promise I made when I first came to Harvard. Standing on this stage today would have been a great surprise to the 17-year-old who first set foot on this campus. And in my mind, I'm still the scholarship kid whose parents drove him all the way to Cambridge from Illinois in a car bulging with suitcases and excitement. I had no idea what a final club was. I assumed it was a group of students who got together to study for final exams. <laughs> when I arrived at Harvard, I hoped to become a doctor because I saw it as the best way to help people directly. I had a pre-med scholarship provided by a company in my hometown, which the university generously supplemented. But despite many personal tutorials by my roommate and best friend, <laughs> It eventually became clear that the pre-med prerequisites were not my forte. So I went to my scholarship advisor to say I was switching fields, I would have to give up the scholarship. I was sorry I had let him down, I said. Sorry did it, that I didn't know how I would be able to continue without the financial support and even sorrier that my goal of a career in service had been thwarted. To my astonishment, he said, I could keep the scholarship. There are lots of ways to serve the public, he explained, and you should choose the way that you are best at. There was only requ one requirement, he said. I would have to promise to devote some part of my life to public service. I have tried to keep that promise. And in doing so, I have also tried to repay a debt that I feel I owe. Before World War I, 
this country gave my family a, ref a refuge from religious persecution that allowed them to survive the Holocaust. When, when World War II arrived. My grandmother was one of five children born in what is now Belarus. Four of the siblings tried to come to the United States. Three made it. The fourth was turned back at Ellis Island. And the fifth did not try. The two who stayed behind died in the Holocaust. So for me, public service is a way to repay the debt my, my family owes to this country for our very lives. I know I know that you all worked very hard to get here. So did I. But for different reasons, the fact that we are all here today makes us lucky. So I hope you will make a promise similar to the one that I made to devote some part of your life to public service. As my advisor said, there are many ways to serve the public. Some of you will decide to devote your entire lives to providing service to others. And on this Memorial Day weekend, I particularly want to recognize those among you who have served or will be serving or are serving our country in uniform. We all owe you gratitude. I also want to thank, recognize those of you who are preparing already to begin your service in fields as wide-ranging as working in government or NGOs, teaching, running for office, and dozens of others. And to those of you who found chemistry easier than I did, I am in awe. As we worry about the possibility of future pandemics, we need people to devote their lives to medicine and scientific research. Fulfilling this promise can also mean devoting parts of your career to service depending on the other obligations you incur as you go through life. Or it can mean serving others directly by volunteering to provide one-on-one -on -one services to those who need them. And here, I want to give a shout out to the students at Harvard Law School and other area law schools whom I met with yesterday you and other students answered my call to provide legal representation for families threatened by eviction during the pandemic. Your work kept those families safe. I am grateful for your service. Earlier in my career, I spent weeks in Oklahoma City investigating the bombing of a federal building, as the President said. I saw and I felt how consequential an outpouring of volunteer services could be. Oklahomans lined up to offer care and comfort to those who were hurting survivors and first responders, neighbors and strangers alike. But it should not take a tragedy to prompt us to look for ways that day in and day out we can help those who need our help. And from my personal experience, I can tell you that public service benefits not just those you serve, but you as well. When you are facing life's unanticipated twists and turns, and I assure you, they will come, it can be a great solace to get outside of yourself, to focus on helping someone else. So don't let your generation be defined by the pandemic. Let it be defined by public service.
There is one particular reason that makes my call to public service especially urgent for your generation. It is an urgency that should move each of you regardless of the career you choose. It is the urgent need to defend democracy. Both at home and abroad, we are seeing the many ways in which democracy is under threat. I want to start with democracy abroad, as I am well aware of the international students in this audience. Harvard has come a long way since my day when you were counted as geographically diverse if you came from the Midwest. <laughs> when, I, when I was graduating from college, there, was many thing, there were many things to worry about in the outside world, including the threat of another land war in Europe. But with the fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989, that threat seemed to recede from the possible to the improbable. Now that land war is upon us. Russia's unprovoked and unjust invasion of Ukraine this February has been accompanied by heartbreaking atrocities. Murders of civilians, the shelling of hospitals, the bombing of a theater in Maripol where hundreds had sought shelter, the demolished residential apartment buildings of Bucha and other cities. There are and there will be many lessons to draw from the current conflict. But if anything can pull us together as a country and as an international community and make clear the stake we all have in the success of democracy both at home and abroad, this heinous invasion by an authoritarian government is it. At home, we are also facing threats to democracy, different in kind, but threats nonetheless. We see them in efforts to undermine the right to vote. We see them in the violence and threats of violence that are directed at people because of who they are or how they serve the public. We saw them when a violent mob stormed the United States Capitol in an attempt to prevent the peaceful transfer of power. First, I want to talk to you about the right to vote. Shortly before I started high school, Congress passed the Voting Rights Act. Thanks to the persistent calls to action of the Civil Rights Movement. That act gave the Justice Department important tools to protect the cornerstone of our democracy, the right of all eligible citizens to vote. But while many of you were in high school, the Supreme Court significantly weakened those predictions, protections. And while you were in college or graduate school, court decisions weakened them even further. Following those decisions, there has been a dramatic increase in legislative efforts that make it harder for millions of eligible voters to vote and to elect representatives of their own choice. Those efforts threaten the foundation of our system of government, and there may be worse to come. Some have even suggested giving state legislatures the power to set aside the choice of the voters themselves. That is not the way a representative democracy is supposed to work. As I said before, when I was sitting where you are sitting today, there were many things to worry about, but it never occurred to me that the right to vote would again be threatened in this country. At the same time that we are witnessing efforts to undermine the right to vote, we are also witnessing violence and threats of violence that undermine the rule of law upon which our democracy is based. We have all seen the violence and threats of violence that have been directed at people solely because of who they are, where they are from, what they look like, whom they love, how they worship, or what they believe. Just weeks ago, 
we witnessed the horrific attack that took the lives of 10 black Americans and injured three others in Buffalo, New York. The Justice Department is investigating that act as a hate crime and an act of racially motivated violent extremism. We have also seen the violence and threats of violence directed against Americans who serve and interact with the public at every level, many of whom make our democracy work every day. These are our fellow citizens who administer our elections, ensure our safe travel, teach, treat the sick, teach the children, report the news represent their constituents, ensure the rule of law, and keep our communities safe. These threats and acts of violence are permeating so many parts of our national life that they are becoming normalized and routine. This is deeply dangerous for our democracy. In a democracy, people vote, argue, and debate, often loudly, in order to achieve the policy outcome they desire. But the promise of democracy is that people will not employ violence to affect that outcome. And yet, we saw that promise tested on January 6, 2021. On that day, as the United States Congress was meeting to certify the vote count of the Electoral College, a large crowd violently forced entry into the Capitol. We all watched as police officers, police officers were punched, dragged, tased, and beaten. We saw journalists targeted, assaulted, tackled, and harassed. Members of Congress had to be evacuated, and proceedings were disrupted for hours interfering with a fundamental element of American democracy, the peaceful transfer of power from one administration to the next. Like the threat to voting rights, this kind of direct attack on an American institution is something I never worried about as I was graduating from college. There had been such attacks on foreign capitals and foreign lands but a storming of the U.S. Capitol itself had not taken place since the War of 1812. Our country's institutions, like the department I lead, are central to the effort to defend our democracy. The Justice Department was founded for exactly that purpose in the midst of Reconstruction following the Civil War. Its first principal task was to battle with white supremacists, particularly the Ku Klux Klan, who violently sought to prevent black Americans from exercising their constitutional rights. Defending democracy remains our urgent charge today. Today, we are assisting international efforts to identify and hold accountable those responsible for the atrocities in Ukraine. And we have launched a task force to freeze and seize the assets of those who enable the Russian government to continue its unjust war. Here at home, we are undertaking one of the largest investigations in our history to hold accountable everyone who was criminally responsible for the January 6 assault on our democracy. We will follow the facts wherever they lead. We are doing everything within our power to stop the hate crimes that terrorize entire communities. We will hold accountable those who direct violence and illegal threats of violence against those who serve the public. And we will continue to use every tool we have left to protect the right to vote. At the same time, we will continue to ask Congress to pack legis pass legislation to ensure that every eligible voter can cast a vote that counts.
We will never stop working to fulfill our founding purpose to defend democracy. But we cannot do this work alone. We need you. The responsibility to preserve democracy and to maintain faith in legit legit its legitimacy lies with all of us. And that brings me to the promise I made here at Harvard many years ago and to what I'm asking of you today, to devote some part of your lives to service. Those who will spend all or parts of your career in public service can build and rebuild the institutions upon which a functioning democracy depends. Those of you who will dedicate a part of your lives to community service can stitch back together the fabric of our civil society. You can overcome the polarization that is tearing us apart. And all of us must take care in the way we treat each other. We must persuade our neighbors and our communities to reject the idea that violence or threats of violence are acceptable. We must work to dissipate the hatred that fuels such violence. A democracy cannot survive if its citizens forsake the rule of law in favor of violence or threats of violence. We are all in this together. We must protect each other. Finally, the preservation of democracy requires our willingness to tell the truth. Together, we must ensure that the magnitude of an event like January 6th is not downplayed or understated. The commitment to the peaceful transfer of power must be respected by every American. Our democracy depends on it. In an editorial published shortly after his death, the great civil rights leader and congressman, John Lewis, recalled an important lesson taught by Dr. Martin Luther King. Democracy is not a state. It is an act, and each generation must do its part. Now, Now, you are that generation. You are the next generation that must devote part of your lives to public service. You are the next generation that must devote yourselves to preserving our democracy and helping others protect theirs. And although what I'm asking of you is daunting, I know that you are the next generation that will fulfill the promise this country represents. I know that our democracy will be stronger by the time it is your turn to pass the baton. Now go out there and use your hard-earned degrees to make the world a better place after a raucous but, of course, legal celebration. <laughs> Congratulations again, classes of 2020 and 2021. Thank you, Attorney General Garland, for your sobering, deeply moving, and inspiring words. 
and for the privilege of your presence with us today. I have to say, I think you would have made a great physician, too. <laughs> Please rise as the commencement choir leads us in the singing of Fair Harvard. Next, the Pusey minister will pronounce the benediction. The commencement exercises then being ended, the sheriff of Middlesex County will declare the meeting adjourned. <laughs> Members of the audience are asked to remain at your seats until the president, the members of the governing boards, and their guests have withdrawn from the platform. It is my privilege to draw our ceremonies towards their close this day with words of benediction and of blessing. Blessing is often a way of saying goodbye, of wishing good luck to those who are taking leave. And though we do offer you graduates every good wish this day, your journey from Harvard is one that began some time ago. We are delighted at your return, but you have already taken your leave of this place. We blessed you then, on YouTube. <laughs> but even those remote words were delivered weeks or months after you had moved away from these grounds, after you had embarked upon the challenges beyond them. In its ancient roots, though, the act of blessing is not a valediction, but a validation. Blessing does not confer goodness anew, it honors goodness now. And that ancient spirit then, classes of 2020 and 2021, and on behalf of the colleagues and honored guests on the stage, on behalf of the family and friends crowding this tercentenary theater, and those watching from near and far, let me say, bless you. Bless you for who you were, Bless you for who you are. Bless you for who you will be. 
Chance and pandemic hurled every obstacle at your education, and yet you pressed on, astonishing us with your perseverance in face of Greece, grief, loss, and disruption. Bless you for who you were. The unraveling world that met you as you departed Harvard continues to unspool. Since then, and still, you work to braid it back together. Bless you for who you are. Our common future promises little security and limitless change. You have stepped boldly into that future, one where our survival as a people and as a species will require the courage to achieve and endure incredible change. Bless you for who you will be. Harvard graduates, our world is broken in manifold ways. The shouts of celebration we make today, as good and worthy as they are, join cries of anguish echoing from Ubalde and Buffalo and Laguna Woods and countless other places. They join cries with despair rising from sites of violence around this wide earth, indeed from the earth itself. This upturned world stands in utter need of change, which means this world needs people who can engage transformation with grit and with grace, people who can affect change with courage and creativity. In other words, classes of 2020 and 2021, the world needs you. Dear graduates, go again from Harvard now in peace. Return to the futures you have already begun. Enjoy every blessing this day and always, and become for our world the blessing you have already been to us. As the High Sheriff of Middlesex County, I declare that the meeting will be Merrick Garland, what a powerful speech. Powerful speech. It re I mean, the whole event today really reminds me of something that I have remembered from President Derek Bach when he said, you know, Harvard has made progress not through its tranquil times, but when it has really, uh, as he put it, been stung by adversity or faced with forbidding challenges. And that feels like what has happened to these classes. There ha it has been stung by adversity, and we are faced with forbidding challenges. You know, what I see in my students that have come through this very difficult time at Harvard, 
is they're committed, as Merrick Garland said, to public service yeah. in a wide mm -hmm. variety of ways. That doesn't necessarily mean serving in the government. There are many other ways of committing to public service, but it's that, it's that sense of committing to a democracy, committing to our nation and to the world. Yes. That, that we, we, you know, saying we want to make the world a better place almost feels trite today, but it's not trite. The world is a dangerous, difficult place. And we've seen evil in the world and evil at home. Yes, we have. And, and there is know, a sense of, of commitment to together working to, yes. to make it a slightly warmer, kinder place. Well, and Merrick Garland saying when he came here as a 17-year-old from Illinois and when he sat here as a graduate, the things that he could not have imagined were the threats that we have today, that the voting rights, the right to vote would be threatened, that um, the peaceful transfer of power would be threatened. These were simply not the threats that were on his mind or the, that of his classmates. They're and that's direct. important I mean, thing. Especially mm -hmm. we're looking at serious threats in 2022 and yeah. this year mm -hmm. in the elections and even more in 2024. And uh, it's very interesting to hear the Attorney General make such a clear statement about his commitment to the rule of law. Of yes. course that's his job. Of course. But, but uh, people are questioning whether he has the authority to really um, stop it from happening. He seems committed to doing well, what he can. I mean, his address enumerated all of the things that we need to be thinking about in very simple and plain language. Uh, if he had been a powerful orator, uh, we would still be hearing his address because people would be on their feet every other minute. Yes. Um, it, it was a wonderful address. Well, it's been a pleasure being here with you today, Diana. Oh. You know, uh, it's a tradition now of us broadcasting this commencement. It is, and yeah. This was a very unusual day. Yeah. Um, starting early in the morning, but look at, you know, we're honoring all of these spectacular students who lived through a very hard time and now are, you know, we see them setting the world on fire in so many ways. It's so exciting, the, the sense of potential that you see across the Harvard Yard right now. And the sense of hope also that uh, these are students. I keep thinking of your students, Dan, and I certainly think of mine as well. Um, who are committed, in your case, to really working on climate change, in my case, to really working on the differences that we bear but need not divide us, but can serve as bridges for understanding. Um, I think we should end with uh, the sense from Prime Minister's speech on Thursday. Yes. The sense of empathy and kindness. Kindness and really empathy. Really a call for mm -hmm. engagement constructive engagement and as Merrick Garland said today the things that divide us we have to reach out across and maintain a dialogue and Harvard has to be one of the places where that begins yes well and it certainly can be I think with the knowledge of students you've had and I've had and of the alumni and the graduates um, we have a, a, a mighty force here. Absolutely. And um, so, congratulations we to all it. of the graduates celebrating today. Congratulations to all the families and to everyone in the Harvard community. It's been a wonderful day. Good to see you, a, Diana. A festival day, but a very, also a very um, important day to take in what we've heard. Thank you, Dan. This has been a pleasure, and as we focus in on that seal of veritas, uh, let's think about what it means.